Hi guys, welcome to the next lecture of the series. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about equivalence relation in detail. In the previous videos, we have learned what all kind of relations we can have. We can have a reflexive relation, symmetric relation, and a transitive relation. A relation which satisfies all three of them. That is a relation which is reflexive, symmetric, as well as transitive. That relation is called equivalence relation. And we saw an example on it. We saw an example of equivalence relation in the previous lecture, equal to. Equal to, say on the set of integers, is clearly an equivalent relation because it is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. You can take any number x. x will always be equal to x. So xrx is happening. x is equal to y. If a number is equal to y, then automatically y is also equal to x. For transitivity, think about it. If a number x is equal to y and y is equal to z, that automatically will imply that x is equal to z. And hence, all the three properties, all the three characteristics are being satisfied. So this relation equal to is an equivalence relation. This is a trivial example for that matter of an equivalence relation. If you ever want to understand what an equivalence relation is, equal to is something that should hit you. Many a times for e equivalence relation, we use the symbol. So when we say x is equivalent to y, so this symbol is used. And this would basically means that x, r, y, where r is an equivalence relation, okay? Let's take a more general example. Again, on the set Z, that is set of integers. Let's define equivalence relation and we will actually check whether that, that relation is equivalent or not. So, X, R, Y, or X, this symbol Y, though we will check whether this is happening or not, but for you to understand that we are on the tracks of equivalence relation, Let's define this relation as R, the set of relation is equal to the set of all X comma Y's such that what is happening is that X minus Y is divisible by three. If this is how we define our set of relation, or this is how we define R, is this an equivalence relation? That's what we want to check. Well, whether it is an equivalence relation or not, before that, I just want to give you an idea of where we are leading ourselves to. The concept of modulo, the concept of modular arithmetic. So with this example, I actually want to touch upon the topic of modular arithmetic with you. Well, let's not think about anything right now and just try to check the three properties that we require to check. For any two integers, x and y, is this relation reflexive? Well, to be in this set, what is required? To be in this set, x minus y must be divisible by three. And we wanna check, to check, is x r x? X, R, X essentially means, or in other words, that is X comma X belongs to this set R. To be in this set, X minus X should be divisible by three. What is X minus X? X minus X is equal to zero. Is zero divisible by three? Absolutely, zero is divisible by any number. So X minus X is zero and zero is divisible by three. So this is reflexive indeed. Let's check for symmetric. Is this relation symmetric in nature? So for symmetric, what do I require? In case X, R, Y, then 
y or x must happen. So we have to check x or y should imply y or x. Okay, so let's start with x or y. Let x or y, that is x minus y is divisible by 3. Now is y or x is something that we want to check? Is y or x? That is y minus x is divisible by 3. So do you think y minus x would be divisible by 3? Well, what is y, y minus x? y minus x, can you think of writing y minus x in terms of x minus y? That's simple. Because if I take minus sign common, I get y minus x is nothing but minus of x minus y. And in divisibility, if you think x minus y is divisible by 3, then minus of x minus y will definitely be divisible by 3. And hence, y, y minus x is divisible by 3. So if x minus y is divisible by 3, then minus of x minus y is definitely divisible by 3. Hence, symmetric is happening. So this relation defined, as the set I defined for you, is symmetric in nature. Let's check for transitivity now. What are we required to check? We are required to check in case x r y and y r z is happening, then that must imply that x r z. Okay, so let's start with what should be our assumption. Our assumption should be that, okay, fine, let x r y and y r z both happen. So let x r y, that is x minus y, is divisible by 3 and y r z, that is y minus z, is divisible by 3. Now we are required to check whether x r z is happening. Let's consider x r z part of x r z that is x minus z let's consider x minus z and let's try to check whether x minus z would be divisible by 3 or not let me take some example here and clarify so x minus y is divisible by 3 suppose we take x as the number 5 y as the number 2 and z as the number 8 x minus y is divisible by 3. Absolutely. Because 5 minus 2, I can divide it by 3. It's nothing but 3 by 3, right? So you will get 1. Definitely it is divisible by 3. And y minus z is 2 minus 8. That is also divisible by 3 because what you will get is minus 6 upon 3 and you can divide, of course. Now, is x minus z, that is 5 minus 8, divisible by 3. Absolutely, you're getting minus 3 by 3 and that's happening. Minus 3 is divisible by 3. So, in this example, what you've just seen is that x r y and y r z is implying that x r z, right? Seems like this is a transitive relation but I'm going to give you a formal proof as well. So more formally, let's try to prove this scenario. What is our assumption? X R Y, that is X minus Y is divisible by three. What is our other assumption? I want that simultaneously Y R Z is happening. That is Y minus Z is divisible by three. If these two things are happening, then we need to prove that Okay, under this situation, x, r, z must happen. That is x minus z should be divisible by 3. Now let's write down what is the meaning of this. The actual meaning that x minus y is divisible by 3. In a numerical example, you must have understood it. So what must be happening? When I divide x minus y by 3, I should be getting an integer. So say x minus y upon 3 is equal to some p. 
which would imply that x minus y is equal to three times p. No brainer. Similarly, when we say y minus z, z is divisible by three, that means y minus z upon three should be equal to some integer q, which implies that y minus z is equal to three times q. Again, no brainer, right? Let's consider x minus z. x minus z would be equal to minus z could be expressed as x minus y plus y minus z because when you look at the total y y cancels off and what you get is x minus z right now what is the value of x minus y and what is the value of y minus z x minus y is three times p and x, uh, y minus z is three times q that is x minus y, um, x minus z is equal to three times p plus q. Three times p plus q. You can, so this would essentially mean that x minus z is equal to three times of some number a, which means that yes, absolutely x minus z is divisible by three. This time, we had not taken any particular numbers. We have taken a general case with x, y, z, where they could be any, any number. Hence, what we can say is that R defined in this manner is an equivalence relation, since all three properties are getting satisfied.